Desiring something from God, those that are sick in body, we're binding the devil, we're coming against hell, and we're pleading the blood of Jesus on your healing. Amen. Yes. We're praying, hallelujah, for your uh, marriages, your finances, uh, amen. A number of things that you are praying about. We're believing God for Pastor Robinson and his family uh, while he is away, but also uh, praying for him that as he preaches the word of God, there's uh, he's got the finger on the pulse of God. He's believing God, amen, for big things. He's uh, He's got the mind of God for us. And uh, and uh, and as you can tell by this morning, uh, he does, amen, praise God. And so we're continuing to believe God uh, in this place. I would like to fill this place up on your overflow uh, by the end of this revival, amen. Uh, I hope you accept that challenge because, uh, amen, it's going to require all of us uh, to get that done, amen. Flyers don't fill churches, amen. amen. And I say that with much pain in my heart because I make flyers for a living. But flyers do not fill churches. What fills churches are people that have been touched by God and are telling other people, you need to come and get touched by God too, amen. amen. Praise amen. God, come on somebody. So let's continue to believe that, uh, believe God for that, amen. Let's come before the Lord uh, in prayer. Brother Dusty, where he is, I would open us up in a word of prayer. Lift up your hands towards heaven, hallelujah. And in unity, let's call upon his name. We thank you and praise you. God, we need you in this house, God. Have a mighty way. And dominion, God, speak to us, God. We pray tonight, God, by the Holy Ghost. Heavenly Father, we just need to stand for God. We just ask you, Lord, to have to hear all these prayer requests of God. We need all these needs tonight, Father. And I just pray, Lord, you would bless the words that we brought forth through the pastor tonight, Lord God. Let it touch our hearts and our minds. Let us leave this place better than we came into it. We see you, Lord God. And just let this fire of revival, Lord God, spread into the whole city, Lord God, into the whole state, into the country, into the people of Philadelphia, Lord God. And let's just win the world for Jesus right where we're at, Lord God. Oh. We just give you glory and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. You can be seated. You can turn to somebody next to you. You can 
welcome them into the house of God, wave at somebody across the way, uh, and then pretty soon we'll be back to our welcoming ritual, amen, because we're a, a church that likes interpersonal communication, uh, amen, and so uh, we, don't, we don't like to be at a distance, amen, but right now, uh, according to the state of Ohio, uh, we're trying to do things right, so we're believing uh, uh, God for uh, to release us, amen, to once again be the church. And, and, to, and to deal with one another, praise God. All right, so just a couple of announcements. Uh, we will be here, amen, in church, uh, uh, not only tonight, but tomorrow night at 7, Tuesday night at 7, Wednesday night at 7. And we'll also have, uh, uh, there'll be a group from Pittsburgh that'll be coming in tomorrow and Tuesday. And, uh, and so uh, it'll just, they'll just come in and, and, and just uh, hang with us. And, and enjoy helping us in revival and enjoy revival. And so uh, we're gonna have a great time uh, with that, amen. We apologize for downstairs. Uh, it, it, is, it is clean and the floor uh, has been completely taken up. We're going to be doing some things there. And so just be careful, but the bathrooms are in great shape. They're, they're, they're all functioning well. Uh, it's just the hallway and then the, the, the main fellowship hall, the Sunday school and all of that area has been, uh, all the tiles been removed back down to 60 year old cement. Amen. Plus we put some uh, uh, some acid on it uh, that you're supposed to do before you, uh, but that's that's gone off of it, but it, it makes those marks that you see. And so, uh, amen. So uh, just be careful. Um, the kitchen has also been removed. We are uh, remodeling that. We replumbed it. Uh, we're going to be doing some more of that. So uh, just bear with us. Amen. What is it? I forget what it says. Forgive our dust or whatever that is, or whatever that uh, that sign says. But uh, amen. I'm, I'm just not uh, uh, not catching it right now in my brain. So let's believe God tonight. Let's see what God can do in this place. We do have offering plates up here. We're asking you, and we're not going to pass those offering plates. We're asking you to give an offering before the Lord. Uh, you can do that when you come in. Uh, and we're milling about before service. You can do that uh, during song service. Uh, you can do that uh, even now during announcements. Uh, and you can do that during the altar call and the end of church service. And we'd like you to do that. We have obligations. We have a great uh, uh, amount of expenses to take care of regarding this revival. We have hotel costs, expense costs, flight costs. And we're going to give them a love offering. Uh, amen. When he finishes on Wednesday, we'll be taking... That offering uh, on, on Tuesday and Wednesday. And so all of these things cost money. I wish we didn't have to worry about that. But God says we're better people when we're generous. Amen. Amen. That generous people are better people. They live longer. It's a true story. Stats show they live longer. Uh, amen. They prosper at an entirely different level. And people that hoard everything they've ever had. And so... Uh, it's uh, it, it's something that we need to be a part of. So uh, you can also give online, phohio.com. Uh, stands for Potter's House, Ohio.com, which is also uh, the website address. Amen. You can use either one of those. And you can get there. You can uh, give online. Uh, and it's very simple to do with your debit card. And uh, uh, amen. it takes just a moment once you uh, put your card in there. Uh, now with Google, I don't know if Google, uh, if you have Google or, or maybe if you have a um, uh, an iPhone, either way, I think uh, the card that you use normally for other things, it'll memorize it. As you go to put it in, it'll just put it in for you. And so uh, it's very simple, literally five seconds to give online. Um, so you could do that, and we'd love you to also. Uh, you could come up and put something in here. Uh, I can't wait till things get back to normal. How about you? Amen. And so, praise God. We are excited to be in our second service. Of revival, those of us that were at men's uh, discipleship on Saturday morning, we're kind of in our third service because we had such a great revival service uh, on, on Saturday morning. And so we're also here tonight and we'll be here tomorrow night. But I'm going to tell you this morning was fantastic. Uh, praise God. How many want to make sure those grave clothes are off? Amen. Amen. You are free. Praise God. Who want, Nobody wants to be a dead Christian. So let's get fired up, filled with the Holy Ghost, 
Amen. He's been all over the world. He was in Africa with me. A tremendous man of God. Uh, uh, amen. There's only so many ways you can say he's old and he's been around. But, amen. Let's give a new Philadelphia welcome to Pastor John Robinson. <laughs> Make me a millionaire so I wouldn't have to live off of this gospel. But he kind of gave me an answer and said, well, then you wouldn't have to believe in me. <laughs> oh, come on. And so, hallelujah. Thank God uh, this morning for his goodness. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, in your Bible, my text is going to be John chapter 11. Amen. You remember this morning, amen, I came out of that text. And so... Uh, in this, uh, the Word of God is so rich, isn't it? It's so powerful. Amen. And uh, so I'm going to pull out of this uh, scripture my text. And uh, the Bible says in John 11, 1 through 3, the Bible says, A certain man was sick, Lazarus. You're going to you're probably get sick of this. Amen. The town of Bethany, Mary and, and Martha, her sister. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord of fragrant oil, who wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, him whom you love is sick. And Jesus heard this. He said, This sickness is not unto death, but to the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And the Bible makes this statement that Jesus loved these people. Amen. Yes. And so uh, I always would like to stress that because you need to know. That bad things do happen to good people. Isn't that true? Yes. Amen. My wife came home one day and uh, broke the news to me that she was at third stage breast cancer. This was years ago. And uh, uh, um, I, uh, you know, we're, I'm a preacher. She's a pastor's wife. We're in the ministry. And that didn't matter. The diagnosis was the diagnosis. And so we found ourselves, as many amen, uh, in that situation, amen, having to process life. Now it's happening. And uh, when uh, you and I see this story begin to bring, come to pass, you find that, that Jesus, uh, his ministry was coming closer to the end. He's, had, he's got many, many, you read the story and you'll see that. Uh, down uh, uh, where Lazarus was in Judea, the, uh, the, the Pharisees there sought to kill him. And then after, you'll see that they sought even harder to kill Jesus. Thomas, uh, amen, was saying, well, we, we can't go down there. The last time you went down there, they, they tried to kill us. And this is, uh, this is not a small thing, amen. And Jesus, amen, he uh, uh, was in this time, and uh, Mary and Martha... Uh, were great converts. Lazarus, uh, uh, the commentators will tell you, he was not only a, a great friend, but a great supporter of the ministry. He was apparently, amen, wealthy, or for those days, amen, well off. He had those things that you read in the Bible, amen, that aren't common, uh, uh, different things, and you begin to realize that here, uh, the devil was trying to attack Jesus and his ministry, that the, the message comes and uh, uh, the, the threat is there. Here's one of your greatest supporters. Uh, here is uh, one uh, uh, that, that you love very much. He's a friend. He's a supporter. He's as close as a guy can be. Amen. And uh, the Bible says that, that this, this message comes uh, and uh, it is one of horrible news. Yes. So Pastor Mitchell always says, amen, it, it, what happens to you in life is not as important as how you and I react to it. That's yes. what you and I see. And this is what you, uh, praise God, amen, see Jesus, amen. He was the only one in this story that didn't uh, panic. He didn't freak out. Uh, he basically says this, uh, this is the title of my sermon, uh, that, uh, amen, uh, this is not unto death, but to the glory of God of God. Amen. The Bible tells us in Corinthians, amen, that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Him through us. That God, amen, He wants the glory of God. Every promise is yes and amen to the glory of God 
When you and I are willing, amen, to, for God to use us, if God is going to heal you, then uh, you, you know what? God will give you this promise because he knows you're going to glorify him. Amen. You and I would begin to rise up. And this is what you and I find. The Bible is a powerful tool. And this is it, what, what is so cool. The Bible tells us that, uh, amen, that we sort of see through a, a, a mirror. We see through a dark, uh, uh, a glass darkly. It gives you this idea of like a mirror, like a glass. It's a, an, an antique glass. You can't quite see things. But one day we're going to see everything clear yes. as day. Yes, yes. Amen. When, that, when this messenger came to Jesus, amen, this was an attack to his mind. It was an attack on his life. It was an attack on his spirit. And this is the biggest battlefield of Christian life. Is the battle that goes on inside your head. And uh, what you and I see, the Bible tells us, amen, that all warfare is not carnal. The weapons of our warfare on our carnal, but mighty unto God, for the pulling down of strongholds, listen to this, uh, casting down arguments in every high place that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity into the obedience of Christ. That this, this is what you and I have been encouraged to do, amen, to live beyond ourselves. Faith is the substance of things that are hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. If you begin to read the Bible and you begin to uh, uh, look at what uh, Jesus is trying to do, he is trying to get people to see beyond their circumstance. Something to prop them up. When uh, when the message comes, your best friend is, is sick. Uh, your best friend is going to die. You're, you're going to go bankrupt. You're going to be in rags. You're going to lose uh, this person. Amen. All of a sudden, there's something that you can prop yourself up on that you're able to see over that hill. You're able to see over that issue and begin to understand uh, Amen. What God wants to do. This is the glorious thing about what Jesus was talking about. Is he was able. He had a worldview that was so different than this world. Yeah, come Amen. on. The Bible says, though, that yes. we have the mind of Christ. Amen. That God wants us. You know, you remember that, that old joke about that Italian, that Italian guy on the side of the road. He's got a bunch of horses there. And this cowboy drives up and he sees these horses and... And he's uh, going to buy a horse from this old Italian guy. And there's a, there's a beautiful looking horse off to the side at the end of the trailer. And he says, what about, what about that horse? How much is that one? He says, oh, that, that, that horse, he don't look so good. He says, well, it looks good to me. Goes over there, he checks his, uh, his teeth, and he, he, you know, he, he, he pats his uh, uh, thighs, he looks under, everything is good. He, say, he, he says, man, this is a, a nice looking horse. He says, no, 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 you don't understand. That a horse is no looking so good. He says, well, you know what, I want to buy it anyway. He says, okay, you, you buy, but I'm telling you right now, you don't look so good. So he gets him out, he puts a saddle on him, he's going to test drive his new horse, and so he's out there, and he's out on the range, and all of a sudden, you know, this horse, uh, uh, he's going too close to the fence, and he's raking his, uh, his jeans against the barbed wire, and he pulls on the side, he, he starts him on a gallop, and he's galloping down, uh, and he's going towards the cliff, and the horse keeps going, and keeps going, and he, he, he nearly goes off the cliff, and he realizes this horse is blind. That's right. This horse is not looking so good. You see, a lot of Christians, they, they, they don't look so good. Come on. And this is what God, amen, is trying to say. I love the character of Sherlock Holmes. The first time I, I encountered him, I'm reading this book. Uh, Sherlock Holmes meets this man. And within a few minutes, he deducts uh, where the guy works, that he's engaged to a, a certain type of woman, that he has just come from uh, uh, the hospital, and uh, he's there because someone has stolen something that he owned. I'm like, I'm as baffled as the guy that's standing, <laughs> right? How in God's name does he do this? How can he deduct because... Uh, 
he begins to see the inner part of his finger and the callus uh, and uh, the, the phrase around his jacket uh, and the smell of his, uh, uh, you know, there was a mingling of perfume uh, and cologne and his, his shoes uh, had a certain powder on it. I'm like, e you got all that in five seconds, you know, but here he is. He, the, 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 the beauty behind Sherlock Holmes, amen, and getting uh, to the bottom of all of these mysteries that he had a perception. He had a, amen, he, he was able to see things others didn't see. Come I would on. have loved, amen, to be the inspector that worked with Holmes as he is uh, in the room and, and uh, uh, all of the uh, the people have, uh, have gathered as much information and to watch him pick a crime scene apart. And you notice, amen, this was, this was not a suicide, it was a murder because there's sprays of rope up in the chimney where the gun, amen, uh, was on a weight and it was outside and it went through the chimney and, and he goes outside and looks and there's a gun on him. It's like, just how, how does he do that? <laughs> Jesus is like a spiritual Sherlock Holmes. Amen. <laughs> yes. And this is what you and I need to learn as a Christian is what you and I, what we need to begin to see and begin to hear. Matthew 13, Jesus said to his disciples, but you, you, uh, your eyes, they see, and your ears, they hear. For sure that I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see, but do not see it, and hear what you hear, and do not hear it. I don't know if you've ever heard a preacher preach a phenomenal sermon, and you have to walk away shaking your head, thinking, how did he, how did he see that in the Scripture? Yes, Something you've never on. considered before after reading the Bible so many times. And this is the, 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 the beauty behind the Word of God. Amen. It's, a, it's endless. Amen. Unsearchable, the Bible says. And as you, you and I begin to, because uh, these men like Pastor Mitchell and, and uh, Richard Ruby and all these guys, amen, Paul Stevens and these men uh, uh, began to uh, preach, you began to realize, man, these guys, when they see something, they don't see what I see. Remember those pictures? And uh, you have to smoke about four joints before you begin to, to see. But, but they have this beautiful eagle, you know. That, <laughs> but all you see is a bunch of little squares. Remember those? They were real popular a few years ago, decades ago. And you would go to the mall and they'd say, can't you see it? Can't you see it? And you're like, no. It's an eagle. There's the beak, right? There's the beak. There's the, what's wrong with you? <laughs> right? Because, you know, your left brain and their right brain and some no brain at all. And so you're, you're looking at this picture and you want with all of your heart. And this is what the Bible says, amen. That if you're unsaved, if you're not right with God, the Bible says a carnal mind, uh, amen, doesn't understand the things of God, amen. That they're, they're, they're totally beside, amen. They're, they're, they're unsearchable, they're unlooked. They're, these mysteries will never be known, amen, by those that do know not Jesus Christ. This is why it's almost futile to, uh, you know, uh, go before these atheists and argue because the argument is, look at man, if you understood what the Bible says, you wouldn't be an atheist. Amen. So I'm going to try to make you understand the Bible. Not going to happen, right? Because I don't see the way you see. And this is what Jesus, the beauty behind this story is, when everybody else, amen, had fallen into unbelief, Jesus says, you know what? Uh, this is not unto death, but to the glory of God. Now, tonight, I, I want to make a blank, blanket statement to you that uh, you can consider and you can apply or not. But, you know, in life, most of the, most of the things that happen in life... Uh, when my wife, amen, uh, 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 you know, was diagnosed with cancer, amen, uh, uh, I could have said this is not unto death, but to the glory of God, amen. She would have slapped me right about that point, uh, but I didn't say that. She's the one. She's the one, amen, Come on. uh, with cancer, Come on. going through chemotherapy, losing her hair, going through the pain and the, all of these things that she had to go through. And she's saying to me, you know what, uh, what this is going to calculate out, I don't know. If it's revival, then bring it on. If it's my kids getting saved, then bring it on. If it's a breakthrough in this church, then bring it on. Oh, and I'm like, come on. stop talking like yeah. that. <laughs> 
Because there's something within, amen, a spiritual person that understands, you know what, uh, this, there is nothing, amen, in life that can keep me from this. Yes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, which cause we faint not, although our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is renewed every day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us an exceeding uh, Amen. Greater weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. So you and I need to gather. We need to understand that there is an unseen. Somebody, and I quote this, not knowing where the source is actually came from, but, it, but it's absolutely thought-provoking. The statement was, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are actually spiritual beings having a human experience. Ah, come on. In other words, you were spirit long before you were flesh. You are you 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 will be spirit. You will live forever. There is an eternity, Amen. That you and I are going to have. We are going to have to live out, Amen, and know the Lord. And what you and I see, Amen, is that, uh, uh, like James says, this uh, experience that we're having in the flesh, this ex is but a, a wisp of smoke. It goes so quickly. Some of you that are over 40, 50 years old, you, you can say amen. Uh, you know what? 10 years used to seem like an eternity. Now it's a blink of an eye. Yes. Amen. Uh, we thought that Y2K was the end of the world. Uh, amen. The year 2000, my head's going to explode. Uh, amen. The world is the end. We're gathering uh, uh, food in our garage and water and, 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 and taking our money out of the bank because everything is going to explode. But you know what? 2000 came and it gone and nothing happened. And you're like, Man alive, that was 20 years ago. Amen. <laughs> yep. Come on. This is interesting to me because what you and I see, God is trying to get us Colossians chapter 3 to say, it says, if you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting in the right hand of God. Set your mind on things on of above, not on things of the earth. For you're dead and your life is hidden in Christ with God. In other words, God is encouraging his people to quit looking and seeing and observing and deducing things, amen, uh, you know, on your own. <laughs> you know, the book of Jeremiah says, I know my thoughts towards you, saith the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address this to you, okay? Because you know what? God knows what he thinks towards you better than you know what he thinks towards you. When you look in the mirror, God doesn't see what you see. When you look at your life and your situation, God doesn't see what you see. And this is what God is trying to say. He says, you know what, I, I know my thoughts towards you. And my plans for you are good. Can I tell you that? Just out of word, yes. I want to encourage you because you know what? God has good things for you. He loves you. He's on your side. And sometimes, have you, ever, have you ever been accused by your wife? I know what you're thinking. <laughs> okay, Houdini, what else do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, uh, I don't, I'm not ESPN here, but you know, uh, God, amen, he, he knows these things, but he is encouraging us. And through the word of God, you and I begin to see, amen, yes. that what he does, he encourages us to see through his eyes. Yes. When we look at a sinner, what do we see? Amen. When we look, amen, at uh, uh, somebody that's hurting, when we look at, at someone, amen, uh, of lesser, uh, you, you know, <laughs> a social status, we look at someone that's down on their lucks, look at someone that's fallen and addicted uh, and on the streets and homeless and maybe doesn't smell so good. Jesus, amen, this is where you and I understand, uh, amen, he wants us not to see what's in front of our eyes when you get the diagnosis when you amen the bible says uh, uh, that uh, to, to set your mind and even one day it says uh, to set your affections on things that are above this is the scripture that i love this is awesome the bible says in hebrews eleven thirteen, 13 talks about all these men that 
heroes of faith. And he says, all these died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims upon the earth. Now while these desire a better country, that, it, that is a heavenly country, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, yes. for he hath prepared for them a city. Yes. In other words, God is trying to get your eyes off of the circumstance and onto him. And this is, this is the mind battle. The battle of the mind is so crucial. As you and I begin to realize, there, there's a story in 2 Kings about a Syrian king who attacked Israel several times. He set up ambushes. He set up all kinds of tricks. And every time Israel knew that they were there, and every time they were thwarted, and the Syrian king came to this conclusion, there's a spy among us. Who among us is telling the Israelites what we're doing? And a servant, uh, a man of this, uh, this Syrian king says, Sir, amen, you don't have a traitor, but there is a prophet in Israel, amen, that knows, uh, amen, what you say in your bedchamber. Remember that story? Israel goes down, or, or, or Syria goes down. They they surround this uh, uh, city, Amen, with uh, their 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 uh, uh, chariots and uh, uh, their their armies. Uh, and the Bible said the servant, uh, Amen, of Elisha came, uh, and he went to the window and he looked out, uh, and he turned to his master and he says, "What shall we do?" Uh, Amen. Uh, uh, the king of Syria he has has uh, uh, you know surrounded us. Uh, and this is what he said. He said, you know, uh, he said, uh, uh, do not fear. I'm trying to find my place here. He said, do not fear, for there, those that are with us are more than with them. And he prayed for the young man that his eyes would be open. And the servant of Elisha went, uh, and he went out to see, and he saw the chariots uh, of uh, heaven, amen, uh, of God surrounding, uh, amen, the armies of Syria. And this is what you and I see. This is the very goal that God uh, wants us to be able to see, uh, amen, his will that overshadows every problem, every issue. And this is why the Bible says in Romans uh, that all things will work together. It's not some yeah. Christian, uh, you know what, uh, bread, uh, uh, daily bread. It is a reality that things uh, will work out to the glory of God. Yes. It will happen. Yep. Yes. And this is where you and I sit in here, that he says, you know what, do not fear, for those that are with us are more than those with the enemy. This is what God wants to do. He wants to open up your eyes. The prayer of every... Uh, pastor is in Ephesians 1 18 it says the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of your calling what is the riches yes. of your glory of the inheritance of the saints uh, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe uh, according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ uh, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but the world that is to come. That the, mo the things that affect our lives the most are the things that are far beyond our reach. Things we cannot see. You know as a new convert I always was always baffled by the end times how we were going to control how the devil would somehow control the masses and how, how, how a world, amen, can listen to one voice. And how economies, amen, whole, whole nations, economies can uh, consider the idea of, of becoming one world and one world government. I, I had a hard time, uh, you know, for years, even wrapping my head around this. But, but just uh, one virus, one virus has controlled masses. You know, my grandfather would never believe that we would have to stay at our, in our homes and go to the stores with masks on. <laughs> it, it was something that was no way. <laughs> I, you know, there's no way. You see, what you and I begin to realize, what really affects our lives are those things which are beyond our reach. This is why the Bible says God loves 
faith. He says, it is impossible to please God, amen, unless you have faith. Without faith, it's impossible. You must believe that he is. Yes. And he is the rewarder of them who diligently. There are all kinds of issues we can bring up here. The resistance of, of the gospel, the hatred of Christians in our society. You know, Pastor was telling me about the, uh, the Seattle thing where a preacher went in there to preach the gospel. He got beat up, you know. It's not just the cops they don't want bothering them. They don't want anybody yes. to tell them what to do. They don't Come want on. God himself to, to, to impose, amen, any kind of reason. And so they beat up the messenger. You and I begin to realize that, that, that when these things begin to come to pass, we need to understand, we need to be able to see. All the preachers that I know, all the friends that I have in ministry, we're, we're, we're thinking of this COVID virus and this whole pandemic thing. We, we look at it and we're rejoicing. We're thinking, praise God, look at this. This is, this is awesome. <laughs> I know you think I'm crazy, but it's like, <laughs> this is awesome, man. Because now, amen, this isn't our doing. This isn't a Christian pandemic, you know what I mean? Yeah. This, is, this one here, amen, and this is the beginning of what's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not happy about people dying. I'm not happy about riots in the streets. But I do know one thing. I'm happy because I know this is the signs uh, of the time that yes. it's the beginning that Jesus is going to come back. Uh, yes. And one thing in the on. moment and the twinkling of an eye, come amen, come you on. and I will disappear. That's what, I'm happy. That's what I'm excited about. That's why yes. it's not time to be discouraged. Yes. That's why it's not time to backslide. That's why it's not time to be your carnal, no good self. <laughs> Amen. Now is the time to say, look towards heaven and say, God, oh, what can on. I do? How can I be Paul apart? What's happening, amen, in my life? Amen. If you could see into your future and you're not right with God, it would scare you to death and you would run to Christ. I think it was William Booth who said, would to God I could take every one of my, uh, my soldiers, his, his uh, uh, people, and dangle them over hell for 30 seconds. <laughs> because, amen, that reality, just seeing that, amen, changes your life. Yes. You know what's, what your problem might be? Maybe you don't look so good. <laughs> Maybe tonight, amen, you've been blinded and you just don't know. And Jesus Christ says, I'll, I, can, I can help you. Paul, when he was on the road of Emmaus, you know, uh, the great thing is the scales fell from his eyes. And he went, amen, to a, a, a brother in the Lord and a brother in the Lord prayed with him. And God opened up his eyes and he began to say, what must I do? What can I do for you, Jesus? Amen. You see tonight, what you and I, where we're at, is God wants you to see things differently. Before I was saved, I would have been right in that shoe store taking shoes. I would have gotten a big screen TV. I would, I would, have, I would, have, done, I would have gotten in there and grabbed whatever I can. Because I didn't understand, I didn't see the way God sees. Come on. I, I want you to bow your head tonight. Oh, Jesus. You're here, and I'll tell you something. How you see is of the utmost importance. You've seen that picture of a, a beautiful girl in an old hag. Some people see the old hag. Some people see the beautiful woman. And tonight, amen, how do you see the, the Christ that has died for you tonight? If you're here, you're not right with God, or you're online and you're, you find yourself, amen, you don't understand, you don't know what your purpose on this earth is, you don't uh, understand where you are in life, and, and you know what, tonight God is here, he wants to open your eyes, I know for me, God gave me purpose, God gave me a place to, of service, God uh, facilitated everything that I needed. When I first got saved, amen, I was 15 years old, lost, I was lonely, I was suicidal, and tonight, amen, I tell you, I can testify tonight, when I got saved, I walked out of that building, uh, amen, new life, new hope, uh, my eyes were open, uh, and the ugliest place in the world, amen, actually, I was amazed at how beautiful was around me because God had opened up my eyes and yes. taken a burden off of my shoulders and 
this morning or this evening, God is dealing with your heart because you know what? Maybe you have been distracted and tonight you're not serving Jesus Christ. You lift your hand and I'll tell you what God wants to say to you. You and I are entering into a time, I don't know what's next in this world politically or, or socially. I don't know what's next in, in, in North Korea or Russia or Venezuela. I have no idea what's going to happen next, but it's been a crazy ride. And tonight what you and I need to understand is no time to not be serving God, to be outside of the will of God. Because tonight God is dealing with your heart. You're here. You're not right with God if you lift your hand. And then Jesus Christ wants to set you free. Maybe you're online. You're watching it tonight. Amen. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to quickly lead you in a, in a sinner's prayer that Jesus Christ will accept you. I, I, I know I've seen it a thousand times. When you give your life to Jesus Christ and you believe in your heart, you walk away with a new outlook, a, a different vision, something that is something has fallen away and now and God is dealing with your heart if you would bow your head tonight and uh, lift up your hands where you are say dear Jesus uh, I know that I am a sinner I know that I have failed you and I ask you right now to come into my heart to forgive me of all of my sins I know I know that you died for me Jesus and I know you rose again from the grave and I need that power to overcome sin. I make a commitment to you right now, Jesus, to serve you with all of my heart. And I ask you to give me guidance, to show me the way that I should go. Help me to see what you see and have the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Tonight, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, whether you're in this building, or whether you're online, amen, I want to encourage you. You need to, you need to get a hold of the staff here. You need to get a hold of, of someone. Begin to ask those questions and begin to get, get to know these people, your family. And God's going to help you. Those who are here tonight, you, you're here. And I'll tell you what, you, uh, the closer you get to God in your walk with him, the more there is to know. That's right. And, and, and tonight, what you and I, what we're encouraged to do is quit looking at our circumstances, quit looking at our status, quit looking at the things of this world, but encouraging us to look at the look at the, what God says. You might look and see. You maybe you think you're a loser. Maybe you're 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 a failure. Maybe you look at your past and say, "Look at my record." You know what? Tonight, Amen. God, you, you need to see beyond that. You need to understand. You need to see what God really wants. Like that servant of Elisha, when he go, when goes to the a window and he sees the enemy. Amen. Elisha says, look again, because God uh, is going to open your eyes. There are more for us. And I'll tell you something tonight. There are more for you than it is for them. The Bible says, uh, amen, with Christ, with Jesus, amen, all things are possible to them who believe that you and I, amen, need to look beyond uh, the diagnosis, look beyond the poverty, look beyond the limitations of the flesh and say, you know what, uh, God, I believe that you can. Do you think for a moment that we could be so arrogant that we could send ourselves to Africa and expect a, amen, or, you know, something to happen tonight, amen. It was God that facilitated, God that pushed, God, that, amen, that orchestrated anything that we might have done for God. And I'll tell you, this is what you and I need to see. That God doesn't see you the way you see yourself. But God sees you as absolute potential men and women of God and tonight I, I know amen tonight maybe things aren't ideal for you but I'll tell you what look through the lens of the word of God and the will of God and I'll tell you something you're going to see something totally different here. Yes. if you don't know how to see if you know look is so good this is why we have church this is why we have pastors yes, amen. because you know what if you don't know what to do there are people here they they know how to guide you, amen. God is dealing with your heart. Because you know what? You, you begin to realize that you've had scales on your eyes. And you need to have a new perspective on life. 
The enemy comes in, and with a word, he can cause you to fall into sin. With a, with a, a simple tug, not, not a chain, just a simple string. And, he, and there you are back doing those old things tonight. You need, you need to begin to see things differently. Amen. God on. tonight even wants to deliver your heart. Amen. And God's going to help you. Amen. If you're here, and that's you, you're not, you, you, you want, you, you want a, a new vision. You want to see things differently. You realize, amen, you know, I've been looking at things totally different. You, you've been defeated. But tonight, God is dealing with your heart. Let's stand in this place. And as we do, God, amen, is dealing with your heart. I'm going to compel you to come to this altar. You want to come tonight, and I'll tell you something. God wants to open up your eyes, but with that vision, with that ability to see, there, God wants to open up worlds of possibilities. Oh, come on. And opportunities. And He wants to take bad situations tonight and turn them around for His glory. And God is going, He is working tonight. Amen. In your favor. You're here. Amen. We're going to open up this oh, altar. Jesus. Amen. For God to move on your life. You want to come. We want to pray with you. We want to believe God for you. Let's give God a moment to us this, this evening. Amen. You want to come. Praise God. Father, we love you. We ask you, God, to move. We love you tonight. We ask you, God, to move. Oh, that you would move upon us, oh God. We love you tonight. We ask you, God, to move and ask you.